non-vegan war. Ah, oh, no sweat. They only just make our world more and more dangerous to live in. So even the moon runs away. The earth stops spinning. The sun is broken almost into pieces, with some giant holes, one ripped in its middle, 20 times bigger than our planet. Eh, what's the problem? Oh, it just might fall to Earth. Why? The answer might come too late for you. Eh, and or for all of us. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Rai can hong rao mi hai lai pasa. Produ suprememastertv.com tap schedule. And by the way, it costs a lot of money. It costs about 740 million billion dollars. I, I got something to do. I got to go do boom, boom, boom. Uh, um, what am I doing here? The king shall false promise make and talk just for talking's sake. Please watch on for Prophecy Part 243. Prophecies by the English soothsayer, Mother Shipton. Warning, don't be vegan, because God will love you for it. Warning, sensitive images. Non-vegan. War. Oh, why not? Heaven and earth curse you. But hell absolutely love you in torture chamber or in the middle of huge bonfire. Greetings, splendid viewers. I'm Druid Ian, a spiritual practitioner of the ancient Celtic tradition. loving people of the United Kingdom admire your choice of the nature-friendly vegan lifestyle. May you bathe in the bliss of inner tranquility. Making peace? Wow! The whole world will be thanking God and kowtow to you. Throughout the history of mankind, the divine messages are often shrouded in mystery. Prophets, messiahs, or whichever names you call them, are often persecuted and oppressed, their words obscured, 
But how do we distinguish the true from the false? To do so, one can only rely on the Divine's guidance, and the truth will reveal itself to those who earnestly seek it. Last week, we started to look into Joe Biden's long history of lies. As the current leader of the United States, his deceptions perfectly illustrate Mother Shipton's following prophecy. The king shall false promise make, and talk just for talking's sake. His presidency started with a fraud-stained election. Since the day of the 2020 US election, various reports were coming in about voter fraud which the mainstream media largely ignored. No evidence of vote fraud in this election? There's plenty at this point. An election training video in Detroit, hashtag Detroit Leaks, shows that ballot counters were instructed to enter challenge ballots into vote tabulating machines in Wayne County. Normally, challenge ballots would be set aside and not counted. And White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany told Sean Hannity this week that the Trump campaign has 234 pages of sworn affidavits from witnesses alleging vote fraud. In some states, vote counting continued through the night and into the morning after the Republican watchers had left. The Republican watchers were not told that the vote counting was being continued. It became apparent that there were unnatural identical vote rates in Georgia, Michigan, Virginia, and Pennsylvania, that at certain times, significant numbers of votes were dumped in for Joe Biden, followed by several dozen vote batches with identical vote rates in favor of Biden. These voting ratios have been deemed impossible. The press and the party monitors were not given notice that counting would continue into the early morning hours, and they should have been. The Secretary of State says one of its monitors was present. The counting of those heavily Democratic absentee ballots did result in a big batch of numbers coming in from Fulton County in the 1 a.m. hour on election night. They are alleging this is one county, Wayne County, Michigan. They are saying that there was a batch of ballots where 60 percent had the same signature. They are saying that 35 ballots I had no voter record, but they were counted anyway, that 50 ballots were run multiple times through a tabulation machine, uh, that one woman said her son was deceased, but nevertheless somehow voted. We've scanned 113,130 as of moments ago. We've adjudicated 106,000 plus of those. Adjudication, the process of reviewing a ballot that may have been flagged during the ballot scanning process. Election supervisor demonstrates how easy it is to change a vote during adjudication. I think I want to vote for Biden. Let's let Biden win this one. And complete. Okay. The duplication of the ballots were done by election office employees in a separate location without any oversight of a voter review panel. In 94 precincts in DeKalb County, it is statistically impossible to have nine out of 10 voters voting for Joe Biden. Project Veritas has insiders in the Georgia recount that are catching votes wrongly attributed to Biden. So the second person is supposed to be checking it, right? So in three times in three minutes, she called out Biden. The second auditor caught it and she said, no, this is Trump. I mean, it's not that's just while I'm standing there. So does the second checker catch it every time? But this way, in three times in three minutes, from 2.09 to 2.12, she got three wrong. Furthermore, mail workers reported that late postal ballots that should not have been counted were stamped with an earlier receipt date so that they could be counted in the election. There were reports of dumped postal votes perpetrated by postal workers and even cases of ballot drop boxes being set on fire. And in a very suspicious move, the United States Postal Service ended postal police patrols just before the elections. We, we patrol off postal property, or until recently, and we prevent mail theft, we protect postal property, postal employees, postal vehicles. Mm -hmm. Why has the Postal Service handcuffed postal police? It, it's, it's, it's remarkable. And 
during a pandemic right before an election. In addition to Biden's camp and his supporters suppressing and manipulating the evidence of electoral fraud, another infamous incident occurred on January 6, 2021. The rally that took place has been widely covered in the media and presented as a violent attack at the United States Capitol building in Washington, D.C. by supporters of President Trump. The deceitful news coverage of this event reported that those who went to Capitol Hill were rioters, looters, and vandalizers, and then used this incident to justify their actions as they harassed and intimidated supporters of then-President Trump. However, the actual footage of the event shows a totally different story. The January 6th March it was January 6th. We're going to call it January 6th, not January 6th. It was January 6th. Maybe we can make that a thing because it was a total setup. These are the pictures you've seen of January 6th. They're familiar because they've been playing on a loop on every media outlet in America for the last two years. There's a reason for that. But it turns out there's quite a bit of video you haven't seen. And that video tells a very different story about what happened on January 6th. More than 40,000 hours of surveillance footage from in and around the Capitol have been withheld from the public. And once you see the video, you'll understand why. Taken as a whole, the video record does not support the claim that January 6th was an insurrection. In fact, it demolishes that claim. Protesters queue up in neat little lines. They give each other tours outside the speaker's office. They take cheerful selfies and they smile. They're not destroying the Capitol. They obviously revere the Capitol. The single most famous person arrested that day was a Navy veteran from Arizona called Jacob Chansley, often referred to as the QAnon shaman. The so-called QAnon shaman. QAnon shaman. Someone named Q shaman. Jacob Chansley became known as the QAnon shaman. But prosecutors called him the most prominent symbol of a violent insurrection. He's been in jail since January and he's trying to get out, but prosecutors say he is still too dangerous to release. Jacob Chansley became the face of January 6th, a dangerous conspiracy theorist dressed in outlandish costume who led the violent insurrection to overthrow American democracy. For these crimes, Chansley was sentenced to nearly four years in prison far more time than many violent criminals now receive. What did Jacob Chansley do to receive this punishment? Virtually every moment of his time inside the Capitol was caught on tape. The tapes show that Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. They acted as his tour guides. What Jacob Chansley actually did was wander peacefully through the Capitol, shepherded by Capitol Police officers, who literally opened doors for him. When one was locked, they went to another. Dozens of officers stood and watched him. All of them had guns. Jacob Chansley did not. The late Brian Sicknick, Capitol Hill police officer who died the day after on January 7th. Now, first, we were lied to and told MAGA rioters threw a fire extinguisher at his head. That was not true. Joe Biden even attended the memorial service for Officer Sicknick. But Officer Sicknick was alive and well on January 6th at the time when we were later told he was dying. Here is surveillance footage of Sicknick walking in the Capitol after he was supposedly murdered by the mob outside. By all appearances, Sicknick is healthy and vigorous. He's wearing a helmet, so it's hard to imagine he was killed by a head injury. Whatever happened to Brian Sicknick was very obviously not the result of violence he suffered at the entrance to the Capitol. This tape overturns the single most powerful and politically useful lie that Democrats have told us about January 6th. They lied about the police officer they claimed to revere. If they were willing to do that, then their dishonesty knew no limits. And after the release of this video, Jacob Chansley was quietly released from jail for unexplained reasons, much earlier than the 41 months he was originally sentenced to serve. The only death that happened due to unnatural causes on that day was a woman named Ashley Babbitt who was obviously unarmed, shot by a Capitol Police officer, 
her mother reportedly attended Capitol Hill every day to protest the murder of her daughter. Two years to the day on the memorial of her daughter's death, Capitol Hill police officers arrested Ashley's mother and even handcuffed her, claiming that she was blocking and obstructing roadways. So her daughter was shot to death unarmed with no stated justification by an officer who shouldn't have been on the force with the documented history of the reckless use of firearms, and it's the mother who gets arrested. With most of the American media conspiring to deceive US and world citizens about the events, Biden continues at the helm of the country with his tragic leadership haunting many US citizens. Our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, shared her precious insights about this incident. Master, during the certification process, many supporters of President Trump protested and raided the Capitol building. Mm -hmm. Why would his supporters do that? They have been uh, trying to do it uh, in other ways. I like go to court, yeah, many times. Yes. Yes. And the court always rejected them. I just did a few times, like symbolic, and did not really want to do anything to, to you know, to clear the injustice. Yes, Master. Actually, not all of the supporters of Mr. President did that. Just uh, uh, some of them, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I read on the news that it's only uh, 90 percent, 90, 90 plus percent of them just stay calm and quiet outside. Only some of them went inside. Okay, huh? Yes, Master. Maybe a dozen. But of course, you, you, you understand that in every group, there are about to be some maybe uh, more temp temperamental, yes? Understand? Yes, yes mm. Master. Even though they didn't want to do anything, they didn't have any weapons. They didn't have anything anyway. And one, one lady was shot dead. She, didn't, she was unarmed. And then maybe one or two of them were incited in the heat of the moment, yes. After all this frustration, uh, because uh, sometimes before also the President Trump supporters, they did protest, but they never did anything. Yes, yes Master. Mostly it's the other side, like uh, uh, Black Lives Matter or the anti foul yeah? It's just takes like a few people to excite some others and they follow. Yes. Even though Mr. President has never asked his supporters to do anything, he always tells them to have peace. Don't play into their games, okay? Have peace. We must have peace. They say, go home. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, Master. Go home. Have peace. Don't play into their hands. It's not Trump supporters who instigated that. Uh, yeah. It was reported like some other group did it. That's right. And could be the opposition party did that so that it would blow it out of proportion. Because if the other party did not have anything to do with it, why Pelosi did not send more security if she knows already that there is a demonstration nearby? Um, true. And if they think Trump and his uh, people are violent or whatever. Yeah. Are not peaceful, why didn't she call for the National Guard or more police or more security forces? Yeah, oh, yeah. She, she just let it be. What? Yes. Huh? Everybody can ask that question. Yes, yes master. master. The opposition is having a big rally protesting next to their working place and they did nothing. They don't even send more police, it's just normal, just a handful of them. Yes, yes. that's right. They invited trouble, they wanted it to happen. Or they even organized it secretly. To blame Trump. Oh, wow. So what else then? Huh? If they always say Trump is this, Trump is that, Trump is bad and incites violence, then why didn't they prepare? Huh? 
why didn't they have more uh, security for their people who work in there? Yes, yes that right. makes sense. So that means they invited it. They wanted it to happen or they organized it. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, master. That's right. And then blame it all on the poor old guy. Oh, man, these people. That's why I told you, Pelosi, Harris, Biden, at least three of them must be out before America can become better again. Yes, master. Can become strong again. I hope my daughter grows into a world where animal rights are made into law, veganism into norm, and exploiting animals into a criminal offense. A world dominated by true kindness and deep compassion. A world where one's success is not measured by how much money they have amassed, but by how many good deeds they have done and how many living souls they have helped. MC Ronan, Vegan. Wise viewers, thank you for joining us today. Please tune in again next week as we come to understand more about the prophetic rhymes of medieval mystic Mother Shipton. Coming up next is the fascinating African heritage of the San and Himba people, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. May you and your future generations flourish in peaceful coexistence with all beings on our beautiful planet. Non-veg? No big deal. This will cause only catastrophic climate change, war, all kind of pandemic, incurable diseases, strange flesh-eater worms, hunger, etc. And finally, a destroyed planet. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, hell not reach. Russia, leave Ukraine or your reign now. Peace be with you too. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash AP.